Greetings students, families, faculty and staff, and thank you for viewing our College of Nursing's virtual white coat ceremony for the accelerated BSN class of 2021. While 2020 was designated the year of the nurse and the midwife by the World Health Organization, none of us could have anticipated how appropriate that designation would be. Nurses have risen to the forefront, showing our resilience in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Although we have now become accustomed to our new normal since the arrival of the novel coronavirus, it certainly does not make it any easier when we are unable to gather in person to celebrate milestones such as this one. But we are so proud of the dedication of our students and could not let the opportunity pass by to recognize these achievements. In 2014, the UF College of Nursing was selected as one of 100 schools nationwide to pilot the new National White Coat Initiative. Partnering with the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, the Arnold P. Gold Foundation developed and funded this groundbreaking program to promote humanistic, patient-centered care among incoming nursing students. We have continued the tradition every year since 2014. For our ceremony, we ask alumni, faculty, staff, parents, and friends to give the gift of professionalism by sponsoring a student's white coat. Our supporters have always generously responded, and every year we are able to sponsor all of our students' white coats for this ceremony. The College of Nursing is sincerely grateful to the individual donors who contribute financially to support the purchase of our students' white coats and this ceremony. We thank all of our alumni, friends, parents, faculty, and staff who made a contribution. I know it means so much to our students to know that you are supporting their studies. The white coat ceremonies have been an important rite of passage at medical schools for more than 20 years. This new collaboration marks the first time a coordinated effort has been developed to offer similar events at schools of nursing. As past president of the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, Eileen Breslin said, by offering white coat ceremonies, our schools are sending a clear message to new nursing students that compassionate care must be a hallmark of their clinical practice. This white coat ceremony is being held now in order to ensure that we establish a foundation and commitment to providing patient-centered care at the beginning of a nurse's professional formation. The white coat has been called a cloak of compassion. It is meant to welcome new students into their chosen healthcare profession and to establish an expectation that students demonstrate compassion as well as scientific proficiency in delivering care, which is the hallmark of professional nursing practice, especially in times like these. As our profession evolves, we honor the symbols of our past and embrace those of our future. This white coat that you hold in your hands symbolizes your future commitment to patients. It reflects the science of nursing and your commitment to providing quality, safe, compassionate, patient-centered care. As you begin this first step of your nursing education, always remember this commitment that has been entrusted to you on behalf of your patients. This year, for our students, we have the honor of hearing from a distinguished nurse and policymaker for our keynote address. In this video, Representative Lauren Underwood, a registered nurse and the youngest African-American woman to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives, shares her inspiring path as a nursing leader and offers her thoughts on the importance of the human connection in healthcare. She's introduced by Dr. Richard I. Levin, President and CEO of the Gold Foundation, and Dr. Deborah Troutman, American Association of Colleges of Nursing, President and CEO. Hello, everyone. 
I'm Richard Levin, the president and CEO of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. I want to greet all of you who are starting your nursing careers or the clinical rotations in your nursing school and congratulate you on your courage in this time of COVID. In the year of the nurse, the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale. And I'd like to give a warm welcome to your family and friends, to your faculty and your deans. Amid a global pandemic, during a devastating economic crisis, and at a moment of reckoning with terrible and persistent racial inequities, it would have been easy to cancel this ceremony. But humanism is not canceled. In fact, the world can see it now more clearly than ever. In times of crisis, healthcare swings into a different mode and reveals itself for what it truly is, one human being caring for another. The White Coat Ceremony was created in 1993 by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation to mark this moment in your journey as clinician, to recognize your awesome responsibility to the patient in front of you, and to emphasize the importance of compassion, respect, empathy, and ethical patient care. In 2020, this ritual has even more meaning. In moments of difficulty and challenge, you can reflect back on your ceremony today and remember again why you first decided to become a nurse, to help people to heal, to care with compassion, to make the world a better place. Thank you so much for this contribution. As we celebrate your white coat ceremony, I'm pleased to introduce the Honorable Lauren Underwood to present the keynote address. Representative Underwood serves Illinois' 14th district as the newest nurse elected to Congress. She is the first woman, the first person of color, and the first millennial to represent her community. She is the youngest African-American woman to ever serve in the United States House of Representatives. Prior to her election, Congresswoman Underwood served as a senior advisor at the United States Department of Health and Human Services, working to help implement the Affordable Care Act, as well as prevent, prepare for, and respond to disasters, bioterror threats, and public health emergencies. Representative Underwood is also a former AACN intern, who as a graduate student at Johns Hopkins University, expressed a strong desire to serve in Congress someday. In less than 10 years, she has made that dream a reality. Representative Underwood is a strong, steadfast champion of nurses and the nation. She is a vibrant voice for compassion and humanism in healthcare, which is the, the heart of this ceremony and your work as future nurses. We are proud to have the Congresswoman join us for this momentous occasion and serve as an inspiration as you take your first steps to becoming a nurse. Congratulations and please welcome Congresswoman Lauren Underwood. Hi everybody, I'm Lauren Underwood. I represent Illinois' 14th Congressional District and I'm a proud nurse. Thank you for the honor of addressing you on the day of this critical milestone. I'm so glad to be able to celebrate with you. I'd like to thank the American Association of Colleges of Nursing and the Arnold P. Gold Foundation for coordinating this virtual ceremony and providing an opportunity for all of us to reflect on what brought you to this point in your professional formation. I completed my BSN at the University of Michigan, and it doesn't seem like that long ago that I completed my MSN MPH at the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. I started at Hopkins at the age of 21, the youngest member of my class. I was ambitious, excited, and ready to chase after opportunities with an open heart and mind. I started my master's program in the summer of 2008, just months before the onset of the Great Recession. I was living a block away from my school in an unfamiliar, low-income African-American community. 
The rapid economic downturn illuminated the poverty in the East Baltimore community I was living in and the inequality in our nation's healthcare system. The recession also accelerated the urgent sense of purpose I felt to pursue my work on health disparities. I quickly accepted a job as a research fellow at the National Institutes of Health Clinical Center where I worked with nurse researchers to better understand clinical trial participation among minority patients in an effort to tackle that long-standing equity issue. I later worked as a research nurse on another health disparity study. And in my coursework, I focused on improving African-American birth outcomes, examining infant mortality and preterm birth rates, and evaluating policy interventions like expanding Medicaid and funding nursing education. It was a little more than a decade ago, in 2009, when I graduated from Hopkins. At the time, more than 40 million Americans lacked health insurance, and I saw a, transform a transformative opportunity in the Affordable Care Act to increase access to care and improve the health of the American people. I'm so grateful I had a chance to work on the Affordable Care Act implementation in the Obama administration after graduation. My commitment to ending disparities in maternal child health outcomes continued in the administration, where I later worked to advance equity with the White House Council for Women and Girls. As I was serving out the last few days of the Obama administration, a classmate and good friend of mine from my MSN MPH program, Shalon Irving, gave birth to her beautiful daughter, Soleil. Just three weeks later, Shalon collapsed and passed away due to complications from high blood pressure related to her pregnancy. She was just 36 years old. Shalon was an epidemiologist at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, where she worked to investigate and eliminate health disparities. She was highly educated with a doctorate. She was excited to be a mom, and she had done everything right, and we still lost her. I couldn't believe it. Her death was a devastating reminder of the disparities that women of color face in our healthcare system. The statistics are unacceptable. Black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than white women, and more than twice as likely than women of other races. Maternal health outcomes, which have been improving worldwide, have worsened over the course of my lifetime in America. Here, right here, in the United States of America, the richest country in the world. Looking back, I can see it was my training as a nurse and in public health that gave me the grounding and evidence-based decision-making that's not only essential to nursing, but to policymaking. That foundation and Shalon's story, which I carry with me every day in Congress, inspired me to co-found the Black Maternal Health Caucus to take on these disparities through evidence-based policies. It's why in March of 2020, I introduced bipartisan legislation to take urgent action to address our nation's maternal health crisis and to finally end the racial disparities and maternal outcomes. And I'm proud to say more than 100 members of Congress have joined me in this effort. Don't ever doubt that change is possible. My training as a nurse provided me with the data-based grounding that has been central to my work in Congress. But being a nurse is even bigger than the practical knowledge you learn and the skills you employ. Fundamentally, nursing is about the intimate moments that you'll have with your patients and their families at the bedside, answering their questions and addressing their fears in what might be the most difficult moments of their lives. That's what white coat ceremonies are all about the traditions of compassion and patient-centered care that have deep roots in the nursing profession. I've carried this spirit of compassion with me during my time in Congress. In fact, some of the conversations I have with constituents aren't too different from the ones you'll have with your patients. People so often come to me when they don't know where else to turn. Whether it's an issue with getting their social security payments or challenges paying off their student loan debt, or an inability to afford insulin for their child with diabetes, in just a few short minutes, you can share in the struggles of members of your community and work to develop policies to help them. My hope for you as you begin your careers is that the spirit of compassion and service that drew you into nursing will stay with you and carry you through the hard days. And as our nation has seen through this pandemic, there will undoubtedly be hard days. But your passion for helping others, particularly the most vulnerable, is a light that will help you see in the dark. And when days are long and you, feel t and you feel tired or sad or worn out, remember that there are patients who look at you as their reason for hope. Also remember to take care of yourselves and look out for your fellow nurses on the front lines. When so many others depend on you, it's especially important that you're getting the support that you need. Because let's face it, our nation can't afford to lose you. 
not only for the clinical expertise that you'll display every day with patients, but in the wide range of ways that you'll be able to be change agents in your communities. Nurses are making a difference as clinicians, researchers, policy advocates, faculty members, and yes, even as members of Congress. Whether you'll be making breakthrough scientific discoveries or leading an advocacy campaign to push for access to affordable health care, your nursing background will prepare you for a career dedicated to promoting the health and well-being of your neighbors and our nation. You might be remembered by a mom as the person who saved her son's life or a dad who watched his daughter's face light up every time you walked into her hospital room. You might be remembered by the elderly patient who doesn't receive visitors but knows you as a friend. You might be remembered for the important paper you published in an academic journal that advances our understanding of the impacts of air pollution on childhood asthma. Or you could be remembered for inspiring your colleagues to call their representatives and express support for legislation that will provide necessary funding for nursing schools. There are so many possibilities ahead of you, but one common thread runs through them all, the opportunity to make people's lives better. There's no higher calling. So, as you prepare to do this critically important work, I hope you're feeling inspired and excited. You might feel a little nervous too, especially in the midst of COVID-19, but as nurses are desperately needed on the front lines of this public health crisis, you will continue to be needed long after the pandemic. There are urgent challenges that must be confronted, from the disparities that exist throughout our healthcare system to the unacceptable barrier of costly, unaffordable care that hurts millions of Americans every year. There's a lot of work ahead, but for now, I hope you can celebrate this exciting milestone. Know that your families, friends, and classmates, and faculty will be there for you every step of this journey. I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to see you change the world. Congratulations, and remember to take good care of yourself. I hope you enjoyed those inspiring words from Representative Underwood. Students, I now invite you to prepare to don your white coat that has been provided to you. Whether you have chosen a representative to assist you with putting on your coat, or if you are coating yourself, you may now don your coat. As you put on your coat, I would like to introduce Professor Emeritus Jody Irving to lead you in reciting the student's oath for nursing. Professor Emeritus Irving composed this oath for today's ceremony. Congratulations, students, on this remarkable milestone. You all have shown resilience and composure during a very challenging time in history. Although it may be difficult to see now, your ability to adapt and overcome during a global pandemic will serve you well throughout your future careers. Now I ask you to please stand and say with me the oath found on the back of your program and scrolling on the screen. As I enter the academic clinical environment to prepare myself for the role of a professional nurse, I pledge to commit to hold fast to the professional values of nursing, resolve to be patient with the young, gentle with the aged, compassionate with the striving, and supportive of the vulnerable. Maintain a balance between the use of technology and the offering of evidence-based humanistic nursing care. Display integrity and professionalism at all times. Understand that excellent nursing practice is supported by respect for my interprofessional colleagues. Incorporate the obligation of lifelong learning to advocate for and deliver the highest quality patient care. And lastly, I will support the nursing profession through my care, leadership, and ability to inspire as demonstrated by my actions and behaviors. Thank you and congratulations again. This year, two very influential faculty members will provide a response to the student oath and speak to you about the nurse-patient relationship and faculty-student relationship. Dr. Karen All and Professor David Derrico are instructors in our undergraduate program. In the spring, students and colleagues nominated these two outstanding faculty members for the college's inaugural DAISY Award for Extraordinary Faculty, 
which honors and celebrates nursing faculty for their inspirational influence on student nurses. What does the nurse-patient relationship mean to me? It means that as a nurse, I care for and about each patient. How did I learn to establish this nurse-patient relationship? It took time. I remember the advice given to me in nursing school by one of my professors. Create a rapport with your patients by finding common ground. I wasn't sure how to find common ground. Most of the time, I felt that my ground was different from my patients, whether we were different ages, came from different cultures, or had different beliefs. But the more I cared for patients, the more I learned that my ground was more similar than I thought. We were both humans. I found common ground talking to my patients. Maybe it was about our likes and food, or maybe it was how we both appreciated sunny days. Finding common ground helped me form a trusting relationship with my patients to care for and about them. However, not all patients are easy to care for. My ability to establish a trusting relationship was challenged on various occasions. On one occasion, I was working as a staff nurse on an oncology hematology unit. I was assigned to an adult patient with leukemia who was being treated with chemotherapy. What made it challenging was that she would yell at every nurse who walked into her room. She was angry about everything. None of the nurses wanted to care for her. To establish consistency with her care, I was chosen to be her primary nurse. My first task was to have a crucial conversation with her, to review the plan of care and include her in the planning process. I remember how we discussed her angry behavior and how difficult it was for the nurses to provide care. Together, we set up goals and interventions of how she could be cared for holistically based on her needs from her body, mind, spirit, culture, and environment. Florence Nightingale is credited with introducing this holistic aspect to nursing. Florence believed that nurses should recognize that a patient is more than just their illness. I set up a plan of individualized care with this patient by understanding her diverse needs. And it worked. The patient stopped being angry. She became kind and respectful. Her chemotherapy was working and she was discharged. I saw her again in a few months when she came back to the hospital unit to express her gratitude. She came strolling down the hall with a plate of homemade baked cookies for the nurses. She hugged me. She was grateful for her care. I was grateful to be a part of that care because as a nurse, I care for and about each patient. Now I take what I have learned and experienced in my nursing career to educate nursing students. As a nursing faculty member, I care for and about each student like I do my patients. Students, I would like you to always remember that every patient is an individual. Every patient has a story. Learn about your patients and care for them with compassion, communication, courage, commitment, and competence. In moving forward in your nursing education, remember to care for and about each patient. Just want to talk a few minutes about the nurse-patient relationship. As a nurse, I believe it is a privilege and an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of patients and their families, often at significant and difficult times. Sometimes the most significant and difficult times in your patient and family's lives. I believe that the nurse-patient relationship is all about communication, good listening skills, showing empathy and understanding, and providing support, education, and information. I have observed the best nurses to be excellent communicators, being good listeners, displaying empathy and understanding, and providing support, education, and information. On the heels of that, I believe that good nurses are good teachers, 
because of these communication skills. I think it's key to recognize that nurses are in an ideal situation to help patients and families due to the inherent trust that people have for nurses and the nursing profession. In fact, did you know that the number one most trusted profession year after year for the last 18 years, the American public has voted for nursing, which really puts us in an ideal situation for being trusted. In a similar manner, I think student-faculty relationships are another privilege and opportunity to make a difference. But in this situation, it's for faculty to make a difference in the lives and careers of you, the next generation of nurses. And again, I think it's all about communication. It requires good listening skills, empathy, understanding, and providing support, education, and information, helping students to achieve their goals to become nurses. I want to thank you for your time, congratulate you for your academic achievements and your white coats, wear them proudly, best wishes on your education and your nursing career, and I'm looking forward to working with you during your time here at UF. Thank you to all of the students, families, and friends who joined us for this virtual white coat ceremony. And a very hearty congratulations once again to our accelerated BSN class of 2021. Please know that we stand with you through this journey of becoming a Gator nurse. I have no doubt that as you continue through your studies and clinical experiences, you will continue to make us proud. Go Gator Nurses!